Battle of Arnhem had lasted nine days and ended in defeat. I was divisional senior medical officer with the airborne forces. We'd hoped for a quick victory. The medical units had been well equipped and trained and the whole operation had been extremely well planned. It had all seemed quite within my capacity. During the battle, we'd saved a lot of lives and limbs. And when the show was over, it was decided that we doctors should stay behind with the wounded. The first part of this story was written in diary form during the days following the battle, when I was taken as a prisoner of war to a Dutch military barracks at Appledore. I wrote it in the belief that should I become lost, there would remain a record of events as seen through the eyes of the chief doctor. I've uh, managed to arrange with the Germans. This is to be a British hostage. Under your command. Splendid. Here. What happened to the arm? I got hit after we'd landed. I was at a German dressing station. I came on here yesterday. It was uh, pretty chaotic. I had a very hectic night, and then Colonel Herford came back from Arnhem. In a dozen orderlies did a magnificent night's work. Well, I should rub something on it if I were you. What are the Germans here like? Well, this Colonel Zingerlin is a doctor first and foremost. Quite first class. He's helped us enormously. Glad to have you aboard, Neil. Come schnell runter. Have a bit of Danny. Come, fix, fix. Pleased to see you. How's it going? Well, we're doing our best. Fine. Pretty shabby, Theo. It was even worse when we first got here. Just one Dutch girl, over 400 wounded. Unfortunately, the Germans made her leave. It's a pity. She was a great help. Is this the best we can do for them, Martin? Straw. It's very difficult, sir. They're doing what they can. I don't care, Martin, how difficult it is. It won't do. I'd better speak to that Colonel fellow. What's his name? Ziegler's already done what he can. Perhaps you'd better have a word with Schroeter. Schroeter. September 28th, 1400 hours. Saw Schroeter. He wasn't very helpful. He doesn't seem quite sure whether he's commanding a POW camp or a military hospital. Took another walk around the wards. There's so much to be done. Many of the patients are extremely ill. They've not stood the journey at all well. Many of them are lying on straw with no blankets. In fact, the whole place looks pretty grim. Heard that Captain Basher Branscombe had been killed one night by an SS man outside St. Elizabeth's Hospital. One of my very best officers and a good friend too. His mother will be heartbroken. Conditions in the makeshift operating theater are fairly primitive. But even so, Theo and the others are doing a splendid job. They work two eight-hour shifts a day and have saved many lives. Unfortunately, though, ten more men have died during the night and Padre Harlow is worried about their burial.
Come, ye blessed children of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Sign Major. Sir. Form the map. No Union Jacks. No German officers present. That was disgraceful. I'm sorry, sir. Sir, Major. Sir. We'll march back. Yes, sir. Squad! Left! Turn! Squad! Fight the left! Creep! March! Stables. Some more blankets would be a help. Just a moment. Hugh. Sir. What are you doing here? Caught a piece of shrapnel, sir. Clumsy fellow. How is the arm? Tickety boo. Well, you won't die from it. 30th of September, 20 hundred hours. Things are getting straightened out gradually. Herford is a veritable tower of strength and is really getting weaving with the food and everything else. He was asked earlier for another 200 patients to be evacuated to POW camps in Germany, but refused point blank to hand over any until they had rested up for a few days and a reasonable train was forthcoming. October 1st, 1500 hours. Arrived at the train. This was just a row of cattle trucks with straw on the floor and small red crosses painted on the roof. Rations for the journey consist of a loaf of bread and a third of a sausage a day. For drinks, they get a large coffee pot for each truck. They're given a bucket as a urinal. The whole train is thoroughly unsatisfactory, and I tell Colonel Schroeter this. The only reply is, we move our wounded this way, and so it is the best we can do for you. Return to camp, seething with indignation. Hugh McKay misses the evening parade of walking wounded and tells me he means to make a break for it. There's been quite a lot of getting out going on all the time. Some don't get far. Three chaps were shot dead yesterday while trying to escape. October 3rd, 1200 hours. Town Major of Appledorn arrived, Major Baron von Oldenhausen. He speaks quite good English and is obviously very anxious to be friendly. Started off the old story as to what a pity it is that Britain and Germany are at war, while Russia is the real enemy. October the 6th, 900 hours. Hospital routine settling down. The place is now getting really well organized. As 
saw John Horsley this morning. He was very ill indeed. And I think he knew he was going to die. Poor chap. He'd done frightfully well. Colonel, we think some more prisoners escaped during the night. I am a doctor. What can I do about that? Well, this is a hospital. You must not escape. I have the men to guard you. Lieutenant, it is your job to keep us in, not our job to stay in. It annoys me they should escape as night. I was a prisoner during the last war. I escaped during the day. Oh, we never escaped during the day. It's too dangerous. October 10th. Oldenhausen turned up with a bottle of gin. Gave me his address in Bavaria and also some books and a packet of razor blades. He's a strange fellow. There's nothing more to do. I'm going to get straight back. Pop it down my gun. Good idea. The job here as doctors is very nearly over. Perhaps we all ought to think about what we're going to do next. Any ideas? What we might hide up somewhere. Somewhere? Somewhere in the warm. In the barracks, maybe. Hide up, wait for the second army to break through. That could be weeks. Months, even. That's a chance I'll take. October 12th. Distinct signs of tightening up on us. Another check this morning finds three more missing. How very odd. Patients 98, staff 137. I feel this may be the final entry in the diary, as I'm sure the next train to POW camps in Germany will be the last. Access for the water pipes. They run along the back. Can you see? It's a bit small. It's big enough. Marvelous. I could stay up there for two or three weeks. There's room enough for two. Look, it's all right with you. I think I'd rather go straight back. Perhaps tonight. Why not? How will you go? Through the wire, by the old watchtower. And I'll. Walk at night, rest up during the day, and then swim across the Rhine to the other side the following night. Just like that. That should hold. Do you want them, sir? As soon as possible, Finnegan. Thank you, Philip. Three loaves, one bottle of eggnog, five bottles of water, Dutch Red Cross parcel, it's got brandy, salt, six blankets, matches and candles, bucket. Where is it? Just a minute, Padre. 
There's a message from the general, sir. Morning. Morning, sir. Morning, Morning, Colonel. The general says you are to move at once. The train goes in one hour. But that is impossible. I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave here in 30 minutes. I see. I'll leave all the arrangements to you. Look here, Finnegan. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to hide up there until you and the rest have gone. Up there, sir? Yes, up there. Put that down towards the door. You're going to help me. Sir? Been up there before, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> I thought I'd fix that. Well. You, uh... Be careful, sir. Right. You hold that ball. Sir? Be careful, sir. Right. Pass me those things up, please, Finnegan. Uh, what sort of things do you want, sir? Oh, use your head, man. Sir. Here's a bedroll, sir. Bedroll. And a couple of shirts, sir. Yeah. Rather you than me, sir. How long are you going to be there? Battle dress. Battle dress. And uh, have a sack, sir. Oh, yes, I'll need that. Thank you. Well, then, pretty good. Mm -hmm. What is that? How does that look, Finnegan? That looks fine, sir. Great. Do you want me to shut the cupboard door, sir? Yes, please, Finnegan. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Cheerio, Finnegan. Good luck. Good luck to you, sir.
lekker gaan kijken. Ja, Hij zegt dat hij een Brits officier is. Help papa in. Have a glass of water. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Graham Warwick. Where do you come from? Appledorn. I came down at Arnhem, hid up in the prison hospital for two weeks. I want to go to Ede. I heard there were some British troops hiding up there. Tell me, do you know a certain Captain Glover? Yes. He escaped three weeks ago. And his age would be? Middle thirties. Right. Yeah, this certifies birthday, the night he spent here. We helped him. He's back in England now. You helped him? Yes. Stop. This is your room, Colonel. This? Yes. <laughs> Please give me a hand. <laughs> It's very well concealed. Yeah. You see? There are steps aside. There are the steps. But be careful of your head. All right. All right. You're a tight fit.
Who is it? Are you all right? Yes. I brought your breakfast. Tea. A straw. Thank you. Are the Germans about? Yes. They shouldn't be, but they are. Ottolo, the nearest village, is Red Cross village. And the Germans have put guns in it. How long should I stay here? I don't know. Last night, my sister went to see somebody of the underground. But he wasn't there, so we must wait till he comes back. But I must go now. You must come inside. But... but uh, what shall I call you? You may call me Tineke. I will be back later. It's me, uh, Tineke. I brought you supper and some hot water bottles. Ah, uh, thank you. You have a cold tonight? Cold, yes. I must just go to the woods. I heard some noises. Is it safe? Yes. There are no Germans now. Good. But be careful. Right. You, um... Yes, I... Hungry? I could eat enough for three men. Please excuse my table manners. You have a big mouth. Mm. Mm. You mean I talk too much? No, I mean you eat a lot. Do you have enough food to eat? Yes. Every time we hide someone, we get some food from the underground. Otherwise, we get some food from the Boeren. When they can spare some, they give some. Boeren? I must learn you some Dutch. Farmer, I mean. I will bring you some Dutch and English books. Dutch books? Yes. I'm not very good at learning languages. You can try. <laughs> you will learn me some Dutch. I'll learn you some English. I know some English. <laughs> You're very clever. Yes, I You're know. very clever to make these potatoes. Delicious. I once tried to grow potatoes in Scotland. The first year. I can tell you, they all died of the blight. You know the blight.
I couldn't come before. There were Germans all over the woods. Did you hear them? I heard something. Oh, um, the man who will help you is still away, so you must wait a little longer. I see. Remember, his code name is Piet van Arnhem. And I must give him your full name, your army number, and regiment. Yes, of course. Colonel Graham Wallach, 1st Airborne Division, 57723. 57723. Do you think you can remember that? Yes, I can. Good. Uh, sh shall we go in the hole? It's, it's a little warmer in there. Yes, all right. think about when you're alone? Hot baths and pints of beer. I worry about my family, not knowing whether I'm alive or dead. Sometimes I think about the future. In normal life, everything is planned. Golf on Saturdays, nanny's night out on Thursdays, people to dinner on Fridays. But now, in the future, nothing is certain. I might... Be captured by the Germans, I might escape. I might be shot. But apart from the nagging doubt in the back of my mind about my family, I like this life. And I look forward to your visits. I often wonder when you're going to come next. It gets very lonely by myself. Do you have any children? Yes, three. I have a picture. Oh. And my wife. Mm. I'm engaged to be married. Can I ask his name? I think it's safer if you don't know. Yes, I understand. Where is he now? Germany. He ducked this hole last year. Tinica, what will happen to you if they find me? They won't. But if they do? They won't. Last year, we kept a Jewish family here, and they were never discovered. But I must go home now. Papa will be worried. Oh. Tinnaker? Mm -hmm. What's my number? Five, seven, seven, two, three. Hello. Mm. Can I help? Thank you. Ah, water bottles. He got uh, hot. Still, that's good. They warm me up. It's been very cold. I get terrible cramps when I'm cold. Uh, come in. Sit down. Oh, uh, I'm sorry the place is in such a terrible mess. Yes. Can you stay long? Tinica? A 
terrible thing ever happened. Some of the underground were found with their transmitters. The SS have lined them up facing the village school with their transmitters beside them. They're so frightened. They know they're going to be tortured. Is that what happened to your fiancé? When this war is over, I never want to see a German again. I never want to hear the language again. It was my fault, really. I... I wrote him a letter about something of the underground. And the Germans were making a roundup. He was picked up and they found my letter on him. They tortured him and put him into a concentration camp at Amersfoort. Later he was sent to Germany for forced labor. I'm sorry. By the way, before you came, somebody opened the trapdoor and said something like, Het is gevaarlijk. Het is, het is gevaarlijk. That means there's danger. Piet van Arnhem. Graham Warwick. Cigarette? No, thank you. Now, at the moment, there are 127 Allied soldiers and airmen are hiding in this part of the country. Soon they will be uh, crossing the Rhine, and you will be one of them. How will it be done? You will be collected here mm -hmm. and moved by bike here. Yes. You will be uh, led by uh, Dutch guides. Major McGay will be in charge. Hugh McKay? Yes. He was at Appledorn. Yes, so he was. Uh, one final thing, uh, Colonel. Um, do you have any ID card? Oh, no, it's lost. Uh, I only have this. The embassy club. <laughs> like dancing, do you? <laughs> Here, put this off quick. So close from inside, yes. they will soon be here. Who? Jan and Willem, your two guys. You go inside and upstairs. I'll go get them. Right.
Dit is uh, Jan. Hallo. Hallo Jan. Hallo. Dat is Willem. Willem. Wel, hallo hij ook. Nee. Yes, Jan. Thank you, Jan. Okay, Goodbye, Willem. Sir. Hello. How are you? Very well. How's the arm? Bearing up, thank you, sir. Glad to see you safe. Do you know John Forbes? No. How do you do, sir? How do you do? How many of them? Thirty, counting you, sir. I'm giving a briefing at eleven o'clock, so can you collect a set of battle dress and get changed? Right. This operation is known as Pegasus II. There are thirty of us here. We'll meet the other hundred and ten a little further north. We'll be divided into four groups. Tonight, we're moving towards Ada. We'll lie up during the day, and later, the guides will take us to the Rhine. When we reach the edge of the river, we've to flash B in Morse. Then the boats will come over and pick us up. They've laid on an artillery concentration round the crossing place, in case we run into any trouble. A Bofors gun will fire red tracer over the crossing place from 10 o'clock on the hour onwards. Any questions? Seems like a longish shot to me, Hugh. Yes, I thought so too at first, sir. But Digby Tate and Water got across that way last month. Digby? Yes. I don't mind taking charge of a group, Hugh. Oh, I'd like you to be OC Group 2, please, sir. Fair enough. Lie up here for a while, sir. I'll post some sentries and get some food to the men. Right, here. Follow me. Just a minute. Let me have a look. Oh, no, it's, it's all right, sir. Thanks. I'm, I'm used to it. Then it's time somebody else had a look. Come on. Sorry. Oh, yes. Nothing wrong with those. But a little bit of rest weren't put right. This time tomorrow, we should all be between clean sheets. Yeah. Hardly well, seems possible, is it, sir? Sandy Allison. Big chap, broken nose. Call it here. I saw him last Tuesday in the RAP. They, they said they were going to move him back to a dressing station in divisional area. Yes, I remember his name. Couldn't do much. A good friend of mine. I'm sorry. You were at the crossroads. Sorry. Our orders were to hold it, wait for reinforcements, and push on to relieve those poor bastards at the bridge. Not a chance. We were cut off three times, and then a runner got through to tell us there'd been a change of plan, and we were to pull back. Except they forgot to mention that Jerry was already across the road. So we just stayed put, held out till Sunday. By that time, there was just Sinclair and me, and four other chaps left. 
out of 60. What a waste. What do you mean? <laughs> All those chaps gone for, for nothing. I don't think it was for nothing. It might have worked. Might. was a young lady of Chislehurst who, before she pissed, had to whistle first. One day she forgot the tune. <whistles> Platter burst. <laughs> On the breast of the barmaid in Crail was tattooed the price of pale ale. And on her behind, for the sake of the blind, was the same information in Braille. Stick to me, you know. Gotta move fast. Just make. swim for it. I can't swim. You go ahead. I'll go up there and find a way back. We'll both go back. I'm not going back. Oh, yes, you are, hello. Oh, yes, you are.
sich doch nicht gelohnt. Abschauen, oder? Was machen wir ein bisschen vorwärts. Ich gucke die da mal drüben. I'm sorry, I'm so damn tired I can't see. All right, you rest there. Graham. Hmm? You slept for nearly 12 hours. 12 hours? Pleased to meet you. Pete von Arnhem, I'm sorry we didn't succeed. How many got across? Only seven. It's very difficult for us now, very bad in this area. We have to move you north from safe place to safe place. But don't worry, I will come back. There's a lot for me to do. Good luck.
achter naar de schuur. Ik haal het u later op. Wat? I catch you later. All right. I've been here before. Thank you, Lev. What would you recommend now? I think you should start cheating. Typical. Hier zijn de mensen die ik hier zou brengen. Hartelijk dank. One straw. One straw? I haven't got anything. All right. Your one straw. An upper straw. No, it's too steep for me. Hey, boys. It is always avond. Come on, you'll have a bottle to drink. What? It is always avond. We have a feast. Come on, you'll have a bottle to drink. Drinking? Yeah. Party, a New Year's Eve party. Thank you very much. Bye. Yes, love to come. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to
Roast, 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 en dan heb je moeilijkheden hoor, echt moeilijkheden. Je moest die kei niet beschrijven. En waarom? Jij hebt een doen. Hij doet hem uit de trussleet. Ja, ik zit in de overgang. Ja, in die. die. Uh, zo. Um, you know, when, when, a, when a woman is between 45 and 50, how do you call it? Mm -hmm. What are they? Menopause. Those years? Menopause. menopause. Yes. <laughs> He's saying that he's in the menopause now. <laughs> What, something is falling off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, what the fuck? I have troubles. Zo, jij, maar ik het niet meer. Nee. Vind je daar gewoon de vorige woord die ze mij waarschuwen? Ja, ze weten wel. Well, why can't we cross the Rhine by ourselves? You will be caught. I've been waiting for five months. You have to wait. I don't let you go. I don't see if there's much you can do about it. I'm for trying it. Graham? No, no, I'm sorry. We must do as he says. It's not nice of you, you know. Because we are in danger. Okay, okay. Look, don't take it personally, huh? Soon you will be taken to the Bisbosch. Uh, it's a couple of waterways and marshlands, 70 miles from here. Fine. When? As soon as possible. You will be taken to separate houses. And you will meet in a few days. Take this when you cross, you know? Yes, of course. Okay. Goedemiddag. Hier is de man die u verwacht. Ah, nice to meet you. Do come in. Thank you. We zullen hem morgenochtend zo vroeg mogelijk ophalen. Ja, uh, ja. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take your coat off and hang it over there. It'll be quite safe. Thank you. It's been terribly cold after your journey. Come in the wall. Thank you. You're English? Yes. My husband's Dutch, sir. He's in Rotterdam at the moment. He'll be so sorry to have missed you. Come and sit down. Uh, thank you. seen electric light for months. I don't suppose you've seen bacon and eggs either. Or a hot bath. The bathroom's upstairs, by the way. There's plenty of hot water.
And Hans tells me you're going to attempt the crossing tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Delicious bacon and eggs. Good. Very much. Jen? Hey, Jen. Your boat's leaking. Jan! What the devil are you doing, though? Damn! Wait a minute. I'm never gonna get home in this goddamn sieve. Sorry, Lou, I'll have to go on. You hide here. I'll send hands back to help you as soon as possible. All right? Great. Just great. I'm sorry, Lou. All this happened 32 years ago. 9,000 Allied troops had fought at Arnhem. 2,000 got out. It took me five months. But the winter that followed the battle was the hardest of the war for the Dutch. I often go back to Holland to see the many brave people of the resistance who helped us at that time. And I've come to look on Holland as my second country. <laughs> 